Hi, good morning. I'm Jill Kepke, the Senior Director of Sales for the Applied Markets, and I'm here to welcome you to our virtual open house. Come on in. I'm going to give you a uh, tour of our technical center here. Um, normally when you come in, you actually sign in here so that we keep track of the people that are in our facility. Especially during this pandemic, we also want to make sure everyone's safe. So what you see here is a periodic table. Uh, it spans the whole length of this hallway here. Took a lot of uh, work from uh, many people to put this together, but it turned out very nice, and it's a nice piece to talk through the periodic table. Um, if we continue down this hallway, we actually will see that we've got a nice area here for all of our conferences. We have several conference rooms. And then we have an area here that um, for uh, our guests to eat. We have the capacity to have um, several different conferences going on. As you can see here, these are our conference rooms. We've actually uh, utilized these as three separate conference rooms, or we op can open it up and utilize the entire area. Uh, for this particular event, it's virtual due to the pandemic. But if it weren't, we would actually open this all up and we would have uh, our guests come in here for the presentations and then we also would have the labs open for lab activities. We do a lot of different activities here in, in the Te Downers Grove Tech Center. The open house is just one of many. We also do customer training and then we have specialized uh, activities and seminars here in the Tech Center as well. So the next room I'd like to share a little bit of information on is our collaboration room. So come on in. In this collaboration room, we actually have set up a smart board. And uh, we can actually look at the data from any of the labs on this monitor. So a lot of our customers come in for demonstrations. So this tech center is available for customers to send in samples, uh, have us look at them to help determine the best solution for your applications. We come in here and analyze and review the data in here and then we can also use our smart board. So this is a room that's used quite often when, when customers come to meet with us here at the Downers Grove Tech Center. So I'd like to introduce you to Kathy Redlick. Hi Kathy. Hi Jeff. Kathy basically runs our uh, Downers Grove Tech Center so if you ever need anything here Kathy's your person to go to. So now we're in our sample prep lab where we prep, prep samples. Sometimes customers might bring in a sample that they would like some suggestions on how to prep it. And um, so we do various preparation. But this here is actually our, our Titan, our microwave uh, sample digestion system. It's one of our newer, newer digestion systems. It's very safe and it's very good for difficult inorganic samples, prepping those samples so that they can be run on the various inorganic instruments. Okay, so next we're going to uh, stop in here and uh, in the ICP lab and uh, talk with Jeff. Jeff is another one of our scientists here at the Downers Grove Tech Center. In this lab here we have all of our ICP OES. Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about the different ICP OES systems in the lab? Yes, our, crew turn, our two current models are the Avio 200 and the Avio 500. Okay. The Avio 200 is our fast scanning model. So we've sped up analysis time by utilizing a prism and a monochromator, and we've gotten away from the sequential systems. What I love about these systems is that the whole sample introduction system itself is modular and is e very easy to take in and out for switching between various applications. So simple oh, nice. as a few clicks and uh, uh, punches of a button. So this is our torch module. Okay. So. And so this is the, the 500 and over there is, uh, is the, no, that's the. This is the 200. That's the 200 yep. and over here is the 500. Is the My apologies. So. And so, um, the, and, and can you tell us a little bit more about the 500? The 500 is our sequential spectrometer. So it's our uh, classical cross-dispersed unit. 
So unlike the 200, it is capable of reading all wavelengths at once, oh. which greatly increases your throughput. So labs looking for high throughput, high productivity, the Avio 500 is the appropriate model. Like the 200, all the sample introduction components are modular. So just as with the 200, switching between applications is as easy as removing the torch unit itself. Okay. So very, very simple, very elegant design. Perfect. Great. Perfect. And then I see we do have uh, one of our older models. Yep. Um, as you can all see here uh, in the lab, we went from this size of an ICP OES system down to this size. Yep. The size has become something that a lot of labs are lacking, and so a smaller footprint has become very popular and very needed by our customers. Yes. Okay, well thank you. Uh, we're gonna move, go next. Maybe we'll go over over to the uh, ICP Mass Spec Lab. Sure. So I'll meet you over there. Okay, great. Thank you. We'll see you there. Okay, so we're now in our ICP Mass Spec Lab, again with Jeff, and we're gonna talk about um, our, we have here our Nexian 2000 model. Hey Jeff, can you tell me a little bit about the difference between the 2000 and then we also have a model 1000, we don't have it here. Maybe tell us a little bit about the differences between those two models. Sure, the laboratory footprint will be the same of the two models. The key difference is the Nexian 2000 will employ three, rea three reaction gases or one collision gas, whereas the Nexian 1000 is really designed for collision gas only. The one Nexium 1000 is really targeted for the environmental market. Okay, so if I'm doing some analysis in environmental, generally a 1000 will be just great for that application. And oh. then the 2000 is used for what other kinds of applications? The 2000 will get you greater uh, interference removal, so you're looking more at the clinical, clinical applications, uh, pharmaceutical applications, semiconductor applications and things of that nature where you have to go to very low detection limits. But even in some environmental, you probably sometimes need a 2000, right? That's correct. Some okay. environmentals go with the, with the 2000, okay. and detection limits in environmental are only going down. Okay. So. And so it is based on what the regulatory is, right? It is. So now um, I'd like you to talk a little bit about one of our newer uh, systems. This is our Nexian 5000. This is our Nexian 5000. It has four quadruples. And actually, if you compare the size to the 2000, you'll notice that it's longer by about the length of one quadruple unit. Okay. With three quadruples, you're using the power of your quadruples for uh, greater control of your reaction chemistry. And the more control of your reaction chemistry that you have, the more interference removal capabilities you have. So you can go even lower in uh, detection limits and interference removal. So you call, we call this our multi-quad. So it's really a triple quad, multi-quad system. It is. But a lot of people worry about the fact that the, two, that the 5000 is a new instrument. And they want to know more about, you know, necess they, they're, they're not necessarily worried, but they want to know more about, you know, the 5000. And how I always say it is, the Nexian 5000 is like getting two instruments in one because you can actually run it like a 2000 as well as a 5000. Is that correct? Yes, you have ultimate control of how you want to run it, whether you want to use all four quadruples or whether you just want to use one quadruple. And if you look at the sample introduction system and what's behind the cover here, the RF generator driving the plasma, it's all the same great ah, features of the 2000. Okay, good. So. so then there's really no concern going with the 5000. If I'm interested in a multi-quad, triple quad, I can go with the Nexian 5000, yet if I, I know about the 2000 and I love it, this is just gonna give me more. It gives you more and you can validate it like a 2000 and then move from there into the triple quad, uh, accessing the triple quad, so Perfect. it gives you more. Wonderful, thank you very much. So now we're in our AA lab, uh, again with Jeff, and we're gonna just talk a little bit about AA. You know, AA is one of those uh, areas that, you know, Perkinomer does very well. We're known in the, uh, in the atomic absorption market with our AAs. Can you just tell me just a little bit about AA and maybe why would someone want an AA instead of uh, maybe an ICP OES? 
AA is wonderful for higher levels of detection, higher concentration levels. AA is really quick. You know, it can be turned on uh, and you can be running your samples within 30 minutes. Um, and it's really good if you're only looking at a few elements, okay. you know. So we've, uh, we are still innovating AA as a company. Both units, this is our Flame AA dedicated uh, only unit. So this is just a Flame AA unit. And then this is a tandem unit, graphite furnace and Flame AA. So you get all the benefits of both systems, the lower detection limits with the graphite furnace, and then the higher detection limits. And this is where the all flame. the lamps are? Yep, this is all the lamps. You have uh, eight different ports for uh, eight different lamps, uh, potentially eight different elements, and then you can go into multi-element lamps if you require uh, more elements. Okay. So, so if I'm going to do a lot of elements, probably AA isn't something that I'm going to want because I don't want to keep changing my lamps. But if I have just right. a specific application where I only need a couple of elements, AA would probably do the trick, right? AA is great for a couple of elements. Perfect. Yeah. So later on today, uh, one of the talks that we're going to be having uh, from uh, one of our other scientists based in Shelton, Erica Cahoon, will be giving you a sneak peek and talking about some of our new ICP-OES systems that we'll be introducing shortly.